come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. It's the podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. We're coming like at you. I feel like that should have echoed. Total. Yeah. We can maybe put it in You can put it in there can afterwards. Can you yeah. an air horn after that? Too. Please do. Or yeah. we can just all say it at the same time, and it'd be even more like cosmically powerful. Well, you we want, don't know what you're going to say, yeah, so we, have, we wanna, cannot yeah. keep up with you it. You want to try it again now that we're ready? Yeah. All right. We have no idea. In our quest for total, total world domination. domination. That was lame. Lame. <laughs> so lame. May it never happen again. Uh, well, so what we do here, if this is your first rodeo, we uh, watch a movie that's chosen round robin. So we usually don't only know the week before what we're going to watch. Then we sit down and we watch it. Then we crack a few beers and sit around a bar and talk about it for your listening pleasure. Who are the people that are going to be talking to you tonight? Michaela. John. Holly. And I'm Colin. We are collectively the Internet Radio Superstars. See, I think we should do it for that. No, I like that. Yeah, that was good. Uh, (laughs) No. Well, tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin, uh, what did we watch tonight? Tonight, we watched the greatest movie ever made about a woman who has a 400-year-old Indian medicine man growing on her neck, the <laughs> Manitou. It's a Manitou. Short, <laughs> short list. <laughs> well, I mean... You know, it's probably not wrong, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. that's very true. I think I'm, I'm confident in making that statement. That's very true. Yeah. Directed by uh, who? Uh, William, William Gidler. Gidler? Gidler. G- Gidler. Do we know? Girdler. Girdler, Girdler yes. It's Girdler. Girdler. Do we know Girdler. anything From... by Senor Girdler? Um, well, there's uh, there's probably two movies in his filmography that uh, are of note to horror fans. Grizzly. One is Grizzly. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, which is a Jaws knockoff about a great big grizzly bear. That's a great got... big bear. Have any of you seen this movie? Because I haven't. No, I've not. I've seen clips. I've seen clips. Yeah, I've seen it, but I don't remember much. I've not seen the whole thing. I've not seen it. Is Christopher George in it? That's all I want to know. Mm -hmm. If I I knew who that was. Oh, okay. I don't recall. Policeman in pieces? I don't recall. Okay. Well, anyway, he made Grizzly back in the when nature attacks uh, subgenre was. And it's a uh, golden age. Mm-hmm. This is the, the second golden age that you guys are exploring on your yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Grizzly. The Michaela's leading us through this summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. It's the seventies and nineties, man, for for all of it. Ooh, so Grizzly could actually it show could. up. You never know. It could. Um he also directed the Black Exorcist movie called Abby, uh nineteen seventy four. Oh. But the thing with Abby is, and I actually like I was uh, you know, because I'm a, I've seen that poster like all my life. Abby, you know. Um but Apparently, like it came out, and then Warner Brothers sued him. Like it's the only one that they really went after, and like that movie has been—it's not available. Like it's they just will disappeared. Not, yeah, yeah. It's like Abby can never be shown. So if huh. you found now, it I want to watch it. I know, right? I'm, you can't tell me that because now I gotta <laughs> sure. watch it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Apparently. that looks—that's terrifying. Yeah. Let me see. Too close to The Exorcist. Oh, and they said, yeah, looks... yeah. I know. Yeah, I've seen that image. Oh yeah, it looks it's creepy. It's unsettling. It looks horrible. It's unsettling. Yeah. Ugh. And then uh, I guess uh, Gidler, after completing the Manitou, went out to scout his next movie, which was going to take place in the Philippines. Dying. He uh, was in a helicopter. Never it heard from crashed. him. crashed. Um, oh. So he was, uh, I think, like 30. Well, they heard one more thing from him. Something like that. And he died. <laughs> yeah. So Damn. the Manitou is his final film. Wow. All right. But this is takes us back to 1978, since you were asking. Starring the great. Tony Curtis. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, father of Jamie. Not being sarcastic. He's great. No, he is great. <laughs> I love great. Tony Curtis. Yes. <laughs> which, is, which calls into question his uh, uh, starring role in this movie. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, when, yeah. You, when you told me that we are watching this, and you are like, Tony Curtis is like, what? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Wait, so he he's in this movie, and it comes out in 78, the same year his daughter is starring in Halloween. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, because I keep on looking at him, like in this movie. I don't know if you were doing this, but I'm like looking at his face. I'm like, do I see Jamie in there? That's what I I was doing. Once in a while, a little bit. Any movie I watch of his, I'm constantly looking for Jamie. I I don't see it. No, I see see a little bit. uh, uh, His. I was going to say Vera Miles. That's not his mom. Janet Lee. Janet Lee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I I see uh, a little bit. Sound like it hot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Does he look like? 
I mean, I've seen the movie, but it's been a long time. Does he look like Jamie Lee Curtis in drag? Mm, not really. Not really, no. no. I think she is just like the perfect combination of the both of them, that she doesn't look specifically like either one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, in, my, catch, in my opinion. I didn't catch anything. I was just like, oh, No, I, I never, I never like, really nope. see it. Yeah. But no. I was also looking at his pants the whole time, so. How come, Holly? They're very tight. Holy shit balls. Literally balls. <laughs> Literally balls. <laughs> Literally balls. They, were they were so balls. tight. Well, it is the 70s. Like, his full shirts on, were very This man tight could not too. run. Full on dick print. Properly, yeah. because his pants were so tight. They were usually lightly colored, which didn't yeah. help either. A lot full of white pants. Full on dick print. My yeah. God. <laughs> so that's the happens. 70s were an interesting and crazy time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. In like, fashion, if nothing The else. movies yeah. that now try to take place in the 1970s never go back and actually... Watch movies from the 1970s as like a guide for their fashion. They don't have, yeah, gu- no, you, they don't have the guts to do full no, dick don't. prints. No, <laughs> so your pants need to be three times tighter. Yeah, yeah. in order to fit in for a 70s. I feel like, like the, in, I feel like the nice guys had some pretty unflattering 70s costumes. Yes, that's true. The Russell nice Crowe looked like dog shit in that whole yeah. movie. I think it's just Russell Crowe. <laughs> But that I mean, it doesn't help, that's but true. but that but just, they uh, had some 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 of those deep V shirts that Tony Curtis was wearing. He was wearing those all over that movie when he should yeah. not. Have been. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. he missed a few buttons yeah. on every mm-hmm. shirt he yeah. was wearing. I don't think they had them. Giant I just collars. don't think the shirt you know, had them. They, it may have been they may have been made that way. The, the, the leather jackets over the deep V button down shirts. Yeah, I kinda kinda like tight it. white pants. I think I'm gonna try it this summer. <laughs> I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> just bring it back. Yep. Yeah. I mean that's the thing. Uh, Tony Curtis in this movie plays a tarot card reader. Yep. Yeah, a con man. Harry's the name, say. tarot's the game. Yeah, and yeah. he spends his days in his bachelor pad reading tarot for little old ladies who come to visit. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie, it's a pretty sweet setup. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a pretty nice apartment, so he must yeah. be doing all right. Yeah. It's a nice apartment. He's got fish in a, a, a gas, gas tank. Station. A gas, yeah, a gas, gas station. station. Which yeah. is gas awesome. Pump. Gas, gas pump. Gas there pump. it is. Yeah. <laughs> gas pump. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yep. Because yeah. it's the 70s. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You don't have a recliner. You have a dentist chair yep. you know, by the window. I mean, right. Yep. Not? Drink beer or out of a wine glass. A dentist chair or like a salon chair? No, it was a dentist chair. It looked chair. like a dentist chair. Yeah, yeah. It was like an old school dentist chair. Because it had chair. like that reclining back kind yeah. of feature yeah. to it. I just like the guy who's just like looking around going, what can we put fish in? <laughs> And he's television just looking at everything. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, like, yeah, one of those old two yeah. TVs. Yeah. yeah. It's a fish tank. I can now. put a fish in that. Yeah. God, console TVs. They're not in this movie, but they should have brought it back. Yeah. In this movie, they did have a computer that, like, I don't know if it was a personal computer or what, a console in the doctor's office, yeah. which was full of all those magical, like, 1970s, just had a bunch of blinking lights. It just lights. lights up. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. can read that. It was did, huge. He didn't have a TV, did he? He just had that that sweet stereo. Yeah, just stereo. Yeah, yeah. the real the had TVs in dope those. stereo setup. It's yeah. pretty nice. nice. The reel to reel yeah. tape player yeah. and mm-hmm. the amplifier. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, it was stacked mm-hmm. floor to ceiling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Tony Curtis has a problem, or Harry Kriskin. What was his name? Raskin. Earskin. Hey. Earskin. Yeah. Earskin. Erskin. Erskin. Harry Erskin. 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 His earskin. But he's got a problem. Like there's enough gross skin in this movie. I don't need earskin to be his name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his uh, ex girlfriend, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Seems to be, yeah. Uh, what was her name? Karen. Karen, played by Susan Strasberg, mm-hmm. who you will know, of course, as the daughter of Lee Strasberg, the, the guy who invented coach. the method. Well, mm-hmm. he and two other people, but mm-hmm. method acting. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't Stanislavski do? do he was so. No, I think they were. Wait, was he? Yeah, he got. No, Stanislavski's. Is there, Tommy Wiseau. Like that's the that's the school think, of acting he studied. Uh, if I'm right, because yeah, because it might be like there was a Stanislavski method mm-hmm. in sk- school, and then yeah. it was like Strasberg, Stella Adler, and mm-hmm. somebody else came up yes. with the method. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Um. So anyway, so Susan plays uh, Karen. Karen. And she has this problem that a lot of people a apparently don't, a minor problem. don't have. Small problem. A fetus is growing on her neck. Yeah. It's yeah. like the size of a softball when we first see it. It starts off gigantic. Yeah. And it only gets like, bigger. This just uh, yeah. showed up three days three ago. Three days ago. The doctors are all checking it out. They're like, eh, well, do, worry. Does it hurt? Well, not hurt. It moves. It, it, moves, it settles it, in. It feels like someone's turning over in bed, is what she said. <laughs> yeah, it's very. Uh, everybody's very very calm, calm about, about it. it, especially because like my understanding is like of tumors and masses and stuff, especially when they're on your like neck and spine, is that can cause like 
paralysis and stuff. Sure. Like they can really fuck with your nervous there. system. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that they're like, mm, mm, just it's fine. Yeah. Well, I think like reg like real ones like grow in and out at the same time, mm-hmm. right? But not this. Well, yeah. one. This one just kind of grows outward. Yeah. From her, uh, still, her spine. Still uh, not something you see every day, though. This is very <laughs> true. Especially very the true. rate it's growing. Yeah. I would have killed for a uh, a yawning shot when it was little. Just you, you just a slow like zoom in on her shoulder, and then you just hear, oh. <laughs> like stretch yeah. out as it settles into her neck. Well, why didn't we see like any silhouette of it moving in there? Some, there cool. were no a uh, little special hand effects or guys something? on this yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Barely. What are you talking good about? Enough. There's like all sorts of crazy. No, no, there is, but yeah. just not like in the uh in the like small animatronic or like um uh like um bladder effect. Yeah, like yeah. Where it's a pulse in or it something like or something like that. Yeah. 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 We li- like we that. never saw it move or yeah. do anything. Yeah, it, like breathed or something it, like <sighs> a little yeah, when it got bigger. Oh, when it was bigger. Yeah, yeah but, but it was like soft little. Size. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So it gets bigger, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yes. Sure the Manitou grows. Well, okay. So how do we get to like I mean, so you got a woman, she's got a uh, a, a tumor, a, a fetus growing on her neck, it's right? A, it's not a tumor. She goes into the <laughs> hospital. Uh, the doctors are confounded. They uh, eventually say, like, well, you know, we're going to remove it. Oh, well, well, first of all, she has to, she's worried, so she gets back together with her old lover, Harry. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they go for a wonderful jaunt. Jaunt? Is that a good word? Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah. For They're the all around travelogue, San like, uh, exploration. Of San Francisco. Pure San Francisco. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. We're all over that place. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. go to the, uh, whatever the garden is that has that kind of Chinese. Uh, it's a Japanese garden, yeah. There you go. We go to the fish market. Of yeah. course. Uh, We're on the, uh, the trolleys and everything. Yeah. Do they, the do they go cars. for dinner? Is, it, is this funny, though? Because they live in San Francisco, but they did all of the things that I did the one day I was in San Francisco. <laughs> this is the San Francisco movie. I mean, it really is like one of the, like, I mean, I know that there are movies set there, but this one was like, we're just going to go to all the tourist spots. Yeah. We're going to hit them all in this film. There was yeah. a really long helicopter shot of the Golden Gate Bridge, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With good. no one, no characters in that shot or anything, just no. like an establishing shot that went on for a really long time. They're just yeah. showing it off. They go to the fish market. Fish are being, you know, beat up and uh, yeah, yeah. They have that. some calamari or something. Sure. I don't know what the hell they do. Crab. Um, and then they spend the night together, and so that, of course, means that he is now invested in her well-being mm-hmm. because while uh, she's sleeping, she utters a phrase. Panna. I don't yeah, remember. remember. Panawichi Pana Salutu. I can't believe we don't remember. They said it like a million times. Panawichi yeah. Salutu? Salutu. Salutu. Panawichi Salutu. Yeah. That is not what it was. It was. Panawichi Pana, Salutu. Panawichi Salutu. Seriously? That's Pana what it was? Panawichi Salutu. <laughs> yeah, that's the phrase. Because sounds... everyone's yelling Panna, but it's Panawichi Salutu. It sounds less like native when you say it, John. <laughs> well, uh, you, there's a reason for that. <laughs> uh, I'm very white. <laughs> so was she. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. But she was also possessed. All right, yeah. I am not. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Possessed by some kind of demon that's growing on her neck. So the uh, the doctors try to operate. Mm. This is unsuccessful. Yeah. Mm. Because somehow just by saying the magic words, Pana Witchy Salatu, you can force a doctor to cut his own uh, wrist. Yeah. 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 And, uh, but this, of course, leads, uh, so Harry, well, this is one of the great like dialogue exchanges in the movie. I thought, like, I like thought it was hilarious. Uh, he has a uh, older client. This lady comes over to his house, mm-hmm. so he can do her uh, tarot card reading, mm. and uh, it escalates into like this comedy of errors or something. She's saying, "Pardon, which he sell it to?" He's trying to call the ambulance at the same time, and she goes out the door, floats down the hallway. And ends up uh, tumbling, careening, or jumping Kareen down good. the flight of stairs, destroying every single rung on this thing on the way down. Yeah. yeah. And dies. He goes to the doctor and he's like, Doctor, you're telling me, like, or what do you say? He said, I have a, my client. She flew down the stairs, flew. And now you're telling me that Karen has a growth growing on her neck? <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, and uh, what does one have to do with the other? I don't like, know. Yep, it's but it's fantastic. It's all connected. <laughs> Did uh, now I'm not totally familiar with the works of uh, Tony Curtis. Sure, uh, he, he do a lot of comedies. 
Uh, Some like a it lot hot. Of, a lot of care. Mm-hmm. Well, aside from that, like he a lot was of a carefree, swashbuckler before that. A lot of carefree that. comedies uh, in his. Well, day. I mean, it I, feels I, like he's got. That. I don't think Spartacus was a comedy. No, <laughs> no. definitely not. He did not. a lot of sword and <laughs> so, not sword and sandal, but like pirate movies and swashbuckling but he did, he movies did a, and stuff. Him and Jack Lemmon did a couple movies. Together. It feels like there's a yeah. light, a light, yeah, to yeah. Dude's yeah, no. no, got did. a fuck ton of credits, man. Yeah, he did do a lot of comedies. There's a lightness to his acting that is makes this movie very funny. Yeah. Because I and feel like it, he just brings that over to this. What do you mean, like, uh, like, like a like not a, taking it too serious? Right, or well, like a fifty. We... Like he's just a uh, how to explain it? I don't know. There's just a uh, a natural comedy to the way he acts and delivers lines that doesn't. Um, would, you wouldn't naturally think of him for a movie like this. Let's right? just say that. Like That's he's right. not the His first star guy. must have been like on the decline when this. You know, somebody says, "Hey, you want to do the Manitou?" Sure. And he said yes. Because the premise is ridiculous. Right. And you have like the world's craziest dialogue that you have to say <laughs> all the time, all the way through the all movie. All the time, all the way through. Uh, and you have to make it believable and non emergent, apparently, because a lot of shit happens in this movie where they just kind of play it off like, it's cool. It's fine. Oh, yeah. 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 So, well, right. I mean, he's got to go like try and figure out like what's actually happening to mm-hmm. his girlfriend because, of course, modern medicine is not like you know solving this at all. No. So you got to go to see uh, your old girlfriend slash or I guess she's not a, you know uh, mentor, right? Uh, uh, right. And she's like a um, medium, like used, psychic medium. Yeah, it feels like they used to do like jobs together. Right. Like yeah. they were they were like they were a team at, at one point and at con to... conning people. Yeah. She yeah. taught him everything that he knows. Right. Like there were a team back in the day and used to pull this over on people, but there was some like some like foundation, some basis to it, something real, but they were using it for the uh for monetary gain, you yeah. know, in the not serious way. Well, she works with her husband and they run a delightful shop <laughs> called uh Marine Wares and Occult Things. Mm-hmm. Catch, yeah. Which I didn't like, see a single occult thing in that store. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Just the Marine Wares. No, in the back. That little table they were sitting at, there was like candles and incense and stuff behind them. Is that all it takes to be a cult? That was a big yes. store. It was a big store. A lot of fishing nets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A lot of you got your suits. They had the, I was going to say they had the steering wheels yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> What's that called? Right. I'm not, uh, haven't been isn't on a boat it, in a while. Is it, is it just a steer- is No, it, it's got the a The flagon. Name. No, I'm the sorry. We're totally flagon? ignorant. No. At the, you say the, you're at the, at the. Like the helm. helm. Is it the helm? The helm's wheel. The helmsman. It's a it's a wheel. <laughs> There's a name it. for this, goddamn it. I know. I know. Like, what is it called? None, none of us sail. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna come back Curious. to us like in a minute. Google boat steering wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you really, you really need to Google boat steering wheels. <laughs> well, uh, I'm trying to think of every Pirates of the Caribbean movie I ever saw. Uh, the jib. No, no, no that's, that's the, the thing. That's the thing. That's the, the thing. Yeah. Yeah. With the sail. Yeah. Right. Did the sail. Okay, well, it'll come to us. Or Michaela will Google it. I'm not, I'm not having any luck so no. far. No. You Google that and nothing it came just, up? Everyone's just like the wheel of a ship, a modern method called a steering wheel. Everyone's just calling it a steering, <laughs> well, wheel. steering wheel. So I don't know. I feel like it has an old timey name of some sort. Yeah, it's a different name that for it. Pirate. The captain's wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Google sailor that is jargon. Definitely not it. <laughs> uh, okay. Sailor jargon. Well, they end up, uh, you know, I mean, because it's the 1970s, and the first thing that you think of is we're going to hold a seance. Obviously. 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 Well, here's the thing about movie seances, right? Sure. Like, Because at this point, you have seen a lot of them. And so yeah. how do you grade whether a seance seen in a movie is any good? The color of the room has to change. Mm, yeah. Is that a prerequisite? That has to be, that has to be a tonal shift. Yeah, that has yeah. to be the, that's the, your first hint that it's working. Right. Yeah, the lighting has to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least if nothing else, it goes dark. It has right. to reach it a helps. climax and then a dramatic stop. Sure. It helps if the color changes. Yeah. As it does. And it goes green. It goes green. Yeah. Green is great. Yeah. Green or red. The, Nowadays, whatever, it goes dark. There, the light fixture in the room will be affected in some way. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, the light bulbs will pop and flames yeah. will come up Or instead. in this case, a chandelier or will Or if it's candle, it'll go out. Yeah. You know? Candles yeah. will go out. The most seasoned person in the situation has to be shocked by what's happening. Mm-hmm. Someone like, will I've never felt this yeah, before. Yeah. Someone <laughs> will, yeah. Someone will be possessed in some way. A window will come open. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, yes. I count yep. on those. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you can yeah. build up to like the crazier yeah. the seance scene, the better. Kind yeah. of like the more nuts you can make it, and this one makes it pretty nuts. Someone coming out of a table. I mean, I appreciate that. I thought that was pretty cool. I liked it. I was curious how the effect worked. That was the yeah. What happened? 
a head came out of a table. Yeah. Slowly rose up a, from a the goopy middle of the table. head. Yeah, it was like tar covered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty cool effect where like somewhere in there they switch the table line. But this is like a cool yeah. effects thing where like when they come into the room, there's a table, it has a black yeah. surface. It's like a it's like black. a marble slab in the mm-hmm. middle of a table. Yeah. And, and there's a planter sitting on it or something. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is also helps you sell, you know, it's a magic trick. And right? it eventually it becomes liquid, liquid. Yeah. Well, they take the, yeah. the planter is there to basically say that it's solid. It's solid. Yeah. Right. Right. Take that off, do the seance. And during the seance, we replace the table yeah. with one that's full of tar. Mm-hmm. Effective. So we can bring up the, uh, the Manitou head mm-hmm. yep. or whatever. And yeah. it just looks around a little bit and then it goes back. Yeah, that's it. Says it. A, says that's a few it. Things possesses the. One it like woman it, and... yeah, it makes noises. It doesn't even say anything. Yeah, it, it just, just makes uh, noises. And then it was... destroys the room. Did she yeah. do a Panna Witchy Salatu at that point? She said something. Yeah, I think she said Panna Witchy Salatu. Oh, of course, because I mean that's, that's yeah. That's our, it's our, it's our, we find yeah. the translation of this later when uh, after the the uh, the seance fails and windows explode and the chandeliers you know do all their thing. Yeah, it's like well we're gonna have to go text, talk to an expert, the guy who wrote the book. And that's Burgess Meredith. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Then we get our best, expo dump. Best scene, uh, best scene in the movie. <laughs> best, uh, one of the best scenes in the movie. I'm saying he he sold it. It's uh, he, was, <laughs> he fucking sold. It. I was like, I, be- I believe this guy is a crazy professor that wrote this book. I do I, I believe it. I really Very did. Believable. He yeah. And it's funny that Burgess Meredith wasn't even acting. That was, no, that's no, what makes no, it that wasn't <laughs> acting at all. That no. was just how that guy but is. But God yeah. damn it, I believed it. Yeah. He makes yeah. some strange and e- extremely entertaining uh, acting choices. Mm-hmm. He does. Yeah. One of which was, I think, like in the middle of some kind of monologue, he's like, oh, pardon me. And then he'd say something, go over to a, a bookcase. He's like, oh, it's not here. And then come just back yeah. over. He's playing with wigs and shit. And you're like, what the fuck is happening here? And I believed it. <laughs> yes. That was the most believable yes. acting in this movie. You're it's telling horrible. me that uh, your friend has a 400-year-old medicine man growing on her neck? You don't need an anthropologist. You need a you psychologist. Need a psychologist. <laughs> I don't think that would help. No. Nope. Yeah. They make that jump, though. They make a lot of jumps in this mm-hmm. in this movie, if not in that moment, jump to jump to jump. You're saying this, but you're saying this, so we need this. Clearly, that like, means whoa. that she's possessed. She's getting signals from a, a, from a, right yeah. from a, what was that? Because he didn't know that it was an ancient uh, medicine man. Yeah, at that point. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what he said, but yeah, she's being possessed and it's sending her images. Like, how do you know this, Tony yeah. Curtis? <laughs> yeah, is he a real psychic? No. I don't know if that's supposed to be implied. He's been well, I was, I was kind of, I was kind arts. of waiting for that, that shoe to drop, like that he actually does have the ability, because it kind of felt like they were going that direction, right. but they didn't actually get there. Yeah, they don't fully go for it. Like, I, like at by the end, I was assuming that he would like invoke some spirit himself and like actually be good at. He does. Yeah, kind of. Does he? Does yeah. he? I don't know if he does. Yeah. Well, he's not, I not think good it was, at it, but he is able mm, to somehow change. That was the computer. Oh, <laughs> then it kind of switch, it switches to Karen at that point. Yeah. Karen's the one who kind of was, saves the day. That was all the computer. Yeah. It wasn't him. <laughs> I don't feel like he's, he's a doing fraud. Computer. What are you talking about? Okay, well, yeah, we're going to have to. Isn't here. it kind of weird that Karen like is the person actually infected with this and seems to have the least amount of screen time in yeah. this movie? Yeah. She's There's long stretches of this movie where she's not in it at all. Yeah. yeah. And that's weird. And she makes the most of what she has, though. I will say she creeped me out. Yeah. 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 Her being possessed. I was thoroughly creeped out, especially that one point where like she's off the table and they're like, get her or she'll die. And she's just hanging out in the corner with it. Oh, when just, the lasers yeah. attack. Yeah. yeah. That scene. I was just like, holy shit. Like I'm scared right now. She's, Cause got, she's like, just creep. She's sack on her back. Yeah. Cause she's just like, she's got features that will, she can extend them and make herself look crazy. She's a big mouth. And she's she, got a big and mouth used and it. wild eyes and she used it very yeah. well. Creep me out. She's got that like Julia Roberts type mouth that like when she opens her mouth, you can see all of her teeth at the same time. Right. Sort of thing. Yeah. 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 She's like the last version of the vampire in Fright Night, but without the, all the big scary <laughs> teeth. That's how big her mouth was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Creepy. She's a cadaverous yeah. kind of. Yeah. 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 Creepy. Too mouth. thin in the face. And then they, yeah, yeah, and then they altered her voice in that, uh, which yeah. I always want someone, I always want people to react more to like someone's voice 
obviously turning demonic in real life. Right? Because nobody ever seems no to like... Ever, yeah. I want to well, see yeah, Tony Curtis going like, change the way your shit. voice sounds. <laughs> you can change the Not way your... Not to that, though. Yeah, but I don't like... Think. Like, I feel like if you were actually in that situation in real life, you'd obviously think that person was just changing the way their voice sounds. Your, your first thought wouldn't be, holy shit, they're possessed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, maybe, that's something that you could easily fake is what I'm maybe saying. Maybe like, so, but it was really creepy once, I mean, once they got to a certain point, I'd be like, something's weird. Uh, not right here. <laughs> this she is, doesn't uh, sound like herself. No. Yeah. Or anything that she's ever sounded like before. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could end up with... Uh, I don't know. know I'd be more let's, concerned let's, with let's, the giant fetus on her back sure, at this point. I mean, that say, just sounds like... say that nobody should be accepting the whole possession thing quite yet, <laughs> I don't think. Like, the doctors are very accepting. They're very of this. all. Everyone's very, very accepting of everything that's like, happening. We tried to cut it off, and one of our doctors up, tr- tried to split his own wrists. Right. Nobody else tries it after that. They just no. sedate her. Mm-hmm. Then they are like, "Well, then we're going to use the laser, the optical yeah. laser, mm-hmm. which ends up going crazy." And like all seventies movies, lasers do yeah. starts burning up the entire <laughs> operating room. Yeah. It's a great scene. <laughs> great scene. I enjoyed it. So they're just like, fuck it, I'm out. I don't need to, uh, no, no, no. What's Bridget Spare this? Uh, what's his suggestion? What did he say? Dealing with the medicine man, you find another medicine man. Oh, yeah, fire with fire. There yeah. you go. I mean, this is how you do it. <laughs> you want us to burn her alive? And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> find a medicine man. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? What is he Maybe about? you should treat it like a tick, though. You know, like, maybe, maybe like hold some heat out. up next to it and see what happens. You maybe. Know? Radiation. It won't, it yeah, won't, I don't it know. won't allow it. <laughs> it's protecting itself. Wouldn't let a knife. Wouldn't let a laser. It's not going to let fire get near it. Yeah. It's protecting itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's what's happening yeah. somehow. It's like reaching out. And... Yeah. Yeah. This is a powerful, powerful magic. So he goes off to the wilds of South Dakota. <laughs> and apparently interviews five different Native American medicine man until he lands on John Singing Rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who basically says, I don't do that anymore. Essentially. <laughs> yeah. I'm retired. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, that's I'm just going to basically that conversation. <laughs> I'm just going to hoe my oregano. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lot, lots of weeds this year. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. He did. Yeah. Yeah. He did yeah. say that. He's just out there farming. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, I mean, I get the kind of, you know, well, I mean, you can't go anywhere near reality with this movie, I suppose, because it's just no. batshit fucking crazy. No. But I get the idea that, like, what they're setting up there is like, so basically, it's like, you know, there's something wrong with your girlfriend. Your girlfriend has something on her back. But, I'm, you know, this is a powerful, if somebody can actually grow themselves back to life on somebody's back, mm-hmm. this is super powerful, and I might get killed. Yeah. And what's in it, you know, for like, what's, how is it worth me risking my life? He's a asking, pack of cigarettes. He's asking all the right questions, basically. <laughs> it's like, this is prison rules. It's like, all right, give me two packs of cigarettes and I'll help Which you for out. a guy who's retired and doesn't do that anymore, it's a pretty low, low price. And in a, in a large donation <laughs> yeah, to say, Native to, American children education. N- yes, $100,000. Which, yeah. which in we never see actually happen. Right. So we yeah, don't know that that happened. That happened. Or is it assumed that it did? I mean, Tony Curtis doesn't look like he has that kind of money. I think, nope. I think they were relying on the rich aunt. Uh, yeah. yeah they the didn't. There is. The, the woman at the seance that we didn't know who she was. That was Karen's aunt that she lives with. She's rich. Oh yeah! It took oh, me, yeah. Okay. It took, oh, it took me. A, it took me a hot minute too. Okay. It took me a while, but yeah, that's okay. who it was. I wonder who yeah. that woman was because they yeah. bring this woman into the seance who hasn't been in the movie before. Yeah, because we've got the the medium, her husband. We got uh, Tony Curtis and this other woman. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Boom! Gotcha. I didn't even know catch that. And I've no. seen it twice. Yeah. Okay, no, I had no idea. Did. So yeah. she's gonna pay off John singing. That's rock. my guess. They never say that, but that's my guess. And it's there's like but. The end of the movie, we see Tony Curtis like as he's getting in a cab, hand him the pack of cigarettes. Yeah, and it's like, oh, don't forget, here's your payment. But we never actually he- hear about the hundred yeah. thousand dollars ever again. If the cab had stopped and he stuck his head. I was like, hey, what about the hundred thousand dollars? And Tony just runs <laughs> off. He's like, ah. maybe that was paid up front, like to get probably him to go from uh, South Dakota to San Francisco. If he was smart. They wired the transfer or something. Like that got the money. paid up front. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because uh, all John Singer Rock wants for himself is payment is he's low on tobacco. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He wants some he's tobacco. an honest man. He needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clearly, he needs, he's not a good farmer or gardener, dreams. so he needs to <laughs> just. Like, why isn't he just growing tobacco? He said the weeds were bad this year, Holly. That's true. Yeah, he's true. Out there with that his is true. Hoeing the same spot for the whole scene. Yeah. That was some bad prop work, man. That actor could bad, not do two bad. things at once. No, and that I, was bad coverage. 
<laughs> and bad editing. Yeah, I was like, and I noticed oh. they never actually showed his garden because they didn't actually plant. They one. showed like a close up of the same spot of he was hoeing plant. twice. Yeah. They the showed same one close up. plant. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and the dirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot of dirt. dirt. It sounded kind of rocky. It's, er- hey, it's right. early in the season. All right, mm. he's planting. It's not growing yet. Give well, uh, John Singing Rock is played by uh, Michael and Sara, who you Star Trek fans may know because he played was it General Kang, Commander Kang. He was a character on apparently three different Star Trek series, oh. starting with the original one oh. in the sixties, really? and then I think he was on Next Generation and huh. possibly Deep Space Nine or Voyager. Voyager. Hmm. He was Dang. also uh, I remember him. He was a character called Kane in a show called Buck Rogers in the twenty fifth century with Gil oh, Gerard. Yeah. And okay. That was the one that had the little robot that went beat beat beat. You're right. Mm-hmm. What's up, Buck? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was also recently, before his death, uh, the voice of Mr. Freeze in the Batman animated movies and ah, TV show. All right. All right. Yeah, he's got so a, quite I'm, a history there. So I am unfamiliar with any of his work. Yeah. I'm oh, of, even the Star Trek stuff? I'm watching I, a lot I've, of Star I Trek. Not, I have not. I have not watched one second of I Star have Trek. I've heard mention of Kang. I have not seen him lately. I've seen yeah. the new movies. That's about it. But surprise, he's Syrian. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, okay. He's a Syrian actor. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, but I mean, he pulled off. I mean, that's the beauty of acting, right? It's like sure. I totally believe that this guy knew what he was talking about. Yeah, coming in and he's going to save the uh, day. With I don't. I don't think I, I did because he seemed pretty know. shitty at his job. <laughs> I don't know if I believed that. I mean, he was leaving out key things, key bits of information that could have helped yeah. people along the way. I think. Hey, Not the t- greatest. To me, he seemed about as reliable as fucking John Redcorn from King of the Hill. I was like, this might as well be that dad character just yeah, making he, shit up like, on the well, spot. His uh, I, The thing I liked about his character, I guess, was that he, you know, it's not so much like he's on, obviously like some kind of, you know, he's an honest guy who's like, you know, motivated by uh, altruism, right? It's like, well, this evil thing is happening and I got to do it because that's just the kind of person that I am. Mm-hmm. But once he actually gets in there, it's like he seems like that he knows that he's overmatched. But I mean, I suppose that's supposed to play to us like, well, this means that this thing that we haven't actually seen and can't really describe what it is. Mm -hmm. It's just like a thing on a girl's back Mm -hmm. can somehow like, uh, you know, destroy the entire world, can undo the cosmos. When he was young and alive, he used to make mountains and cause rivers. and whatever. But the rules he sets up contradict themselves right after he sets them up. Okay. So that's why it makes it seem like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like what? Uh, they have to put a salt. I don't know. He never really specifies what it is. A uh, spice barrier. A, like, yeah, it is basically <laughs> uh, around the the Manitou. And he says, this does he calls say, into question okay. the technicalities of it. Like exactly. all the way around. Yeah. Just halfway around because he doesn't do it. He just does it to the wall. He doesn't do it. Can the, the thing bust through the wall? Wait, like... are we explaining what we're talking about? Like, okay, it's, yeah, it, it takes place in a yeah. in a in a hospital room. Most of it's in a hospital because yeah, it's Karen, growing off Karen's back yeah. for most of the movie. Karen's in the hospital, it's slightly getting bigger as yeah. we keep. She's a hunchback Karen. now. She is. Yeah. Bed, <laughs> <laughs> bed rest. Yeah. A giant sack on her back. I don't even know how she can turn an egg. I don't think you'd be able. That's why she was laying like that the whole time. She was like. Yeah, laying yep. with like her head twisted, and it has a very quiet, gentle birth, which was Ugh. weird. Uh, yeah, God, it, it didn't seem there. very painful for her, even though they said that she could probably die if it came yeah. out of her. And well, yeah, that was it his whole didn't, thing. Like, it, she was fine. <laughs> yeah, I like the way that Burgess Meredith brought up the like, wait, you don't want to kill it. You imagine in a couple of days we could actually talk to a four hundred year old person. <laughs> I'm on his side because <laughs> if I'm anybody, I'm just like, well. I wouldn't have believed this to begin with, this whole story of sure. uh, uh, a 400-year-old medicine man growing on someone's back and then being birthed. So I'd be like, mm-hmm. I kind of want to see this. As long as I kind of want to kill your out. loved one, I suppose. Right. Well, yeah, as long as I'm not uh, uh, yeah. Tony Curtis in love with Karen and all that stuff and she's not someone I care for, I'd be like, this is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to film this and uh, for science. Mm-hmm. And uh, But apparently I was the only one who had that idea because yeah, everyone was recorders. just like, we're not going to let anybody know about this. Uh, it's gonna be us three, and uh, we're clearing the whole wing of the an hospital. Orderly, uh, who doesn't know the danger he's in, obviously, we're gonna bring him in on this as well. Well, this is what you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that John Redcorn. Sorry, it's no nope. John, John Singer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I put that out there. <laughs> well, <he laughs> now leaves, we're all gonna be saying it. He leaves certain things out in his description of what yeah. this guy can do because at nope, you know, it's like, you know, well, okay, the. the uh, 
they do like build a barrier around this is the idea we're going to contain it with the magical uh, brick dust and salt salt right. and paprika uh, yeah. mm-hmm. but they don't move they're in a hospital room they don't move the 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 bed out from the wall so they make kind of it's not a circle it's like a, yeah, horseshoe. It's a horseshoe yeah like how does that work john yeah. i don't understand it apparently it's a magical wall mm-hmm. yeah technicalities and so the 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 creature is birthed in a scene as you said very gently it is very gently and slow and quiet and just he's he's, coming it looks like like performance art it's like it looked like performance art it's like no clone of ripley being birthed in alien resurrection yeah it's very slow i was beautiful i was gonna say it's it's like ace ventura 2 coming out of the rhino (laughs) even that was that was more rough that That was more rough you're right you're right yeah and he's just like this was like slowly tearing a plastic bag (laughs) like that's all it was and yeah this was not coming out of the anus it was like no yeah it was like the orc coming out of the membrane from yeah. Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, kind of like that. Yeah. See more. At least they had that was like that was dirty. goopy. That was yeah. like yeah. muddy. Like too dry. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. There was no blood or, or anything. It looked like it looked like the sheet to the bed half the time versus it did. Her skin. Yeah. I was like, yeah. wait, yeah. what? No, Which part of more. me is kind of glad it wasn't more graphic because I was already grossed out. Uh, it should have been. If you're yeah. gonna go for it, put some. I know. I know that too. Yeah. It didn't seem like it was very painful to her. It seemed like it should have been more painful than that. She was under the spell of Misquamacus. That's his name, apparently. Misquamacus. Yeah. Well, I mean, how how graphic can you get? You know, this movie's rated. What PG? PG. Yeah. Of course it is. (laughs) Really? Well, that's before PG thirteen existed. Yeah. Yeah. Jaws is PG. Even though we kind of saw her boobs at the end. Yeah. 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 That's what they used to How do back do- in the day. Oh, there's a lot of, uh, yeah. what is it, Barbarella? Isn't oh, that rated yeah. like PG. G- PG? There's a lot of boobs in that that's movie. That's true. That's a good <laughs> point. Basically, they were just like, what do we do? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Howard the Duck, there's duck boobs in that. That's rated G, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's PG. Yeah, I remember that was a big deal mm-hmm. on the playground back when I was a kid. That like I see some duck, duck boobs. boobs. All these parents taking their kids to go hey. see yeah. PG oh. Howard the Duck. I got Howard the Duck. Yeah. <laughs> It's got duck boobs like, in well, it. You, you got want... Star Wars and Howard the Duck. They're PG. I they fucking hate Howard the Duck. I do too. Fuck that. Oh, movie. I hate that movie. Fuck that movie. I wait till next week. Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So what we were talking about earlier is so basically that the the uh, the guy Misquamacus is birthed through her back, yes. and he's like a little Indian person or some little person wearing a lot of. Uh, prosthetics. Yes. He, yeah, he looks like a bad cosplay of darkness from Legend. Kind of. Kind yeah. of. He's got yeah. the contact lenses yeah. and always shot. In he's close red. Up, long like, string yeah. hair. He slithers across the floor after he's birthed, and it's really gross. Mm-hmm. It's really gross. Very true. Very gross. There's, See, that's where they got the glob. Gro- yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Where yeah. Slimy yeah. That was thing. gross. Yeah. yeah. And Wait. everyone seems to be pretty nonplussed by this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. they're like, all just watching in silence. This is yeah. kind of the moment of truth. They're just like, all right, what they said is actually happening, and well, a person, mm-hmm. for all they know, is being birthed out of the back of Karen. Well, yeah. you know, like They've had like three days to prepare for this. This is what I'm saying, Colin. <laughs> it's only been three days, and they've come to accept that a person is going to be birthed out of Karen's back uh, not just any person a 400 year old medicine, medicine man. man yeah yeah everybody's cool with this everybody's so cool with this yeah mm-hmm. and apparently so they cool. just have to contain his power yep you know because eventually his power will grow so because he's on like his fifth reincarnation out of eight once he hits eight then he quit he oh, can uh, on. Yeah. yeah yeah he can <laughs> join what was it i'm gonna he can bring the dude like gecko Manitou, or yeah, Geico Gatomo, Manitou, or something Gatomo, like that. The, the lizard demon? No, that was uh, no. This was like the like your Jehovah or your Jesus. Oh, yeah. right, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the main the super one. medicine, the big man. one, yeah. <laughs> the boss medicine yeah. man, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, fi- the final boss, Magitou. Yeah. <laughs> somebody yeah. Manitou, yeah. Gitchy Manitou, Gitchy. There it is, it's Gitchy Manitou. Gitchy Manitou. You think I'm making this up? No, Gitchy Manitou. I really did think you were making that up. That is Gitchy Manitou. So so he gets birthed, and everyone's it, pretty cool with it. Like I said, they just yeah. put a guard to watch. Who looks exactly like the orderly that just died. There's three guys. Well, the, but let's here's talk about where the, the rules. Yeah, because the, the, I don't get this. Is where I don't get the rules. So if as long as he's contained, he can't do anything. Yeah, that's not that's true. not true. That's not true. <laughs> just proves that in the very not, next. Yeah, scene. it's right. not true. And if he can't do anything and he's contained, why are we not just killing him then or taking right. care of it? Why are we just sit? Why are we waiting for? Doesn't anyone have a gun? Have we yeah. tried that? They said like, we can't have the cops come and 
shoot guns at him because the Manitou of the guns, the Manitou of the guns will. Well, he can, he control. can control them. But then, what good is the circle doing? Yeah. yeah. What right. good is the circle doing? I say, then? I say, let's can... give it a shot. It, it, you know? Yeah. It makes it no sense. Hurt. You could try. Yeah. So, you could try. What are they waiting for? I don't understand they, what they're waiting for. They think for. they have it covered. Uh-uh. They put again. They put the orderly uh, station yeah, him wh- in the what, open door. What are we waiting for? Well, Why, right, what right. is the end game here? I, we don't know. Yeah, we that's what I'm saying. It makes no point. sense. Well, it feels know. like, okay, so I'm reaching, right? It's like the effort right. that they <laughs> expel because basically uh, John Singing Rock is calling down the Manitou of the rain and the mountain and the wind to contain this thing, right? right? And that takes so much effort that uh, basically they have to let the battery recharge again before they can go back in there. It's kind of like the exorcist, Right. Where you go into the room and you do the power of Christ right. compels you, then you got to go out in the Barrier hallway spell. and recharge, All right, we're spent. and then come back in. Yeah. But it plays like Michaela said. It's like what the fuck are they waiting for? The little dude just sits there, like basically uh, comatose, right, what on the you? floor, and uh, so they leave a guy, an orderly, to watch after him. Mm-hmm. And this isn't the one who falls asleep because when they come back to the room, like all of a sudden, dude has no well, there's skin. one who's sitting like right next to the bed. That's the guy who That's has no guy. skin. That's the guy who's who, who ends up being skinned alive and, so, and thrown against the door and thrown against and and then so they come back, <laughs> they all come back and it's like, wait, what happened? And then Singing Rock is like, ah, oh, he must have enacted his spell of uh, uh, of de-skinning people, and she's like, why didn't you tell us that before? <laughs> skin right off. Yeah, that was like, uh, it's like you didn't tell us this was an option that he could just skin people. <laughs> this guy's a hack, and he's running a scam on the scammers. He's yeah. he's like the ultimate scammer. I would not these be scammers. in the room at that point from then on. <laughs> Yeah, because I'd be like, "Hey, what else are you not saying he can do?" I'd be like, "Okay, we're not waiting anymore. Like now, we're calling." I would try and shoot him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Well, do we ever explain what the hell a manitou is? What is a manitou? I don't know if I know. (laughs) It's um, nope. I'm not even gonna try. I mean, the way he explains it, he's like, "There's." He basically says, "There's a manitou in everything." It's It's like the soul. It's the spirit of of things. Like your beer bottle has a manitou. Apparently, it's like the energy. According to them, it's like the energy of every object. Yeah, which is that's where I'm like, kind of, huh? Yeah, but I mean, I get like, you know, every person has a spirit. Everything is a manitou spirit growing on your back. It's a. Holly, weren't you saying it's like atoms though? Right. The way he said, the way he he made it sound like is that everything was made up of manitou, so everything is like. So he's saying like manitous are essentially atoms. Everything is made up of atoms. Yeah. Yeah. I like everything has an energy. Even that beer bottle. There you go. Yeah. These microphones. Yeah. Manitous. Mm-hmm. You think we're joking, but I mean manitous. basically. This is what they're like, going with. I mean, this is how you save the world. Manitous. Uh, yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Um at this point, I mean, is it just me or would you just leave? Like, I'd be like, I don't know. I'm, I think was, I'm out. All right. I think I'm this out. This was the question I had <laughs> yeah. while watching this movie. Would you rather, in this case, of you knowing uh, if you're Tony Curtis at this point, yeah. Do you stick around because you want to see this happen and you want to, like, if you have an eyeball on it, you know yeah. where it is and everything. If yeah. you leave, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if it's going to come after you. You don't know if it's going to get loose in the world. You might be, like, living in fear of it at that point. It's like, maybe it gets loose and everything. At least at this point, you have eyeballs on it and you know where it is. True. I was trying to make that decision in my head. Like, which would mm-hmm. I rather do? Mm-hmm. Leave yeah. and just be in the darkness about it or know where it's at? Yeah. I might want to know where it's at, considering but, this event. But considering John Singing Rock's not being honest with you about his capabilities and things like that, you're kind of a sitting duck by being there. Or he's being well, constantly would... surprised by like the things that it can do. If, but he know. wasn't surprised that? about the skinning thing. He was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Right. <laughs> I mean, like, I, he exactly. wasn't surprised by that. He should that. be listing off things this is capable of. Yeah. yeah. Aside from... Because he just goes with the general total destruction. destruction. Right, total destruction. It's yeah. like, well, let's get to the minor things it can do first. Yeah. Yeah. Does that just mean he can do anything? Right. Because it can do a whole lot, it turns like or it turns out. He, uh, the Manitou summons one of the great old ones at some point, which uh, apparently is this lizard thing that attacks the doctor. It's, like <laughs> it's a, a ghost lizard. Ghost lizard. Yeah, ghost it's a ghost lizard. Uh, he's able to reanimate the skinless dude mm. and bring him back to life. And then we have zombies in the movie. Yeah. yeah. This movie did keep on doing things that I was like, okay, it, we're doing this now. And for cool. some reason, the entire war, the entire wing was turned into fucking Hoth at one point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nice. Yeah. This is, this is where we get to the point where we're like, wait, what you doing, Tony Curtis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're walking down an ice hallway right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Towards a 400 year old yeah. medicine man. <laughs> Who How's he, it going? at some point, actually is able to beat back by throwing a typewriter at him. 
Like the the nurse is frozen at the yeah. nurse's station, and the, the man two keeps on blasting yeah. everybody back with his psychic uh, power waves. Yeah, and he picks up a fucking typewriter, throws it at the man two, it explodes. Man two yeah. cowers right. in fear, takes his typewriter, throws it at the night king. Yeah. <laughs> was that a callback to like that that line earlier? Was like we have all this science and technology, and yet like evils in the form of like a four hundred year old thing, basically. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you're saying <laughs> they connected a couple dots I in this think so. movie, huh? Isn't this like, yeah. the, in some way, like underneath it, it's the, you know, pitting uh, ancient Science versus nature. religion or, uh, you know, mythology against right. modern day Religion versus science, science, basically? Yeah. Kind of? It's just the goofiest fucking way of going about this in the world. When they converge, yeah. throw a typewriter at it. Because I get, like, the exorcist thing is, you know, exorcist, they take her to the, uh, you know, science and the doctors, and, yeah. like, we can't do anything. The science is helpless in the face of this. Right. And so then you have to turn to the occult, right? In this, it's like, well, we turn to the occult, because that's what you do. But then it turns out, like, the science is, actually is somehow... A cult in itself. Sure. And the you say power, somehow. The power, the the voltage. You say somehow because we don't know. Yeah. And they don't explain it. Well, they get to, it out they get to the, the, man, they get to the Manitow the thing, yeah. But it's not like he was, like, uh, channeling the Manitow of the typewriter as he threw it at the... Mm-hmm. He was, but he didn't maybe, know it. Maybe he was, and he didn't know it. Yeah. You wouldn't know it from watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> we're figuring that out now. Yeah. Because it's mentioned later, and so we're just like retroactively going like, all right, fine, sure. Yeah, because at that point, I think uh, once he beats him with the type, or, you know, whatever, they score some kind of victory <laughs> sure. with the typewriter, they're, you know, he's basically like, John, you should go home. You're out of this. You know, your face is all busted up. You should get out of here. Right. He threw uh, 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 implements, the surgery implements at your face Yeah. in order to escape. But then they figure out, like, this is how we're going to try and beat him. We're going to turn on all the power in the hospital at the same time. Mm-hmm. We can do that from this console over here, which I love that. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It's Let's all connected that. to this. Super Nobody com- had that power in the 70s. Super Nobody. computer. <laughs> but I love that they thought that way. <laughs> sure. you, get, you have all this power. and How much of this stuff do you have? What stuff? Well, these computers and these electronic things that draw well, a lot of power. Well, I suppose a bunch, really. And uh, Yeah. It's all but can you turn them all on at once? Well, yes, it feels can. like <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Star Trek lately. It feels like a very Star Trek divert the power from the. Yes, it feels like a very Star Trek way to defeat a problem. It's like, can we divert everything from the shields to this? And mm-hmm. if we can do that and focus it on this, we can destroy it. Have you have you been watching Next Generation? Yeah. Is that what you want? Have you noticed? It's mostly original Star Trek, which is what this feels like. I was going to yeah. say, like, I feel like Picard's way of getting out of like. 30 to 40% of their problems is just going, come on. And like, you just come on. This way out of my, and that's that, this movie. Right. This movie well, does that too. That. This, this feels more like, let's, maybe it's mostly because there's a lot of uh, uh, computer banks with just buttons that are flashing, yeah. which is very. Oh, they make oh, that sound too. Yep. Which is a very original Star Trek. So it feels like they're all just like, focus all the energy on here and we can destroy it. Mm-hmm. That is what happens. Bombs. It is. Like literally, <laughs> yeah. Only lightning. They have to channel it through uh, John well, Singing Rock. That's well. So they, well, they try going through John Singing Rock. And how you do this, I don't know. How you channel? You just got to go the in there, man. You the, have yeah. to have like get into space because we end up in space. Mm-hmm. Let's just say that. The, All right. Which one yeah. of you? When we started come, this movie, we come back saw that coming. No, I'm I did not, not expect a hospital room to turn like. If space. you just if you <laughs> no. showed me the first scene. In a in a in a snapshot, mm-hmm. and then showed me that scene in yeah. a snapshot. I'd be like, I have to know how we get to here. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I have to know yeah. the journey that gets us to the void. Did- the void, Karen, Manitou. That's yeah. right. Topless Karen yeah. in the bed. The Manitou off in the distance. And right behind him, the great old. One. Great I'd be like, beyond, this is going to yeah. be a journey, and I'm for it. Yeah. Was there a Let's reason there. it all turned to like Hoth? Did, 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 never I, did it, okay, I was like, did no. I miss something, said. or did no. it just is he just flexing? Is he just like, look yeah, what I can so, do? Let's just say that. Yeah, <laughs> his power is he growing. Is. He's yeah. just yeah. turning into yeah. ice yeah. floor. Yeah, I like to think that he's like pulling the energy out of the atmosphere or something like that. He's getting really powerful in a really short amount of time. He really is, and he's not, a, but he's not growing. How, no, that is a better idea than what this movie 
wants or knows it can do. Yeah. That he's just pulling the energy. He's pulling everything oh, yeah. out of, so it's sapping the energy around the yeah. environment around well, him the of ghost things. Thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's like right. Cold yeah. spots. Exactly. I think yeah. that's a transference. Of, I mean, I'd like to think that's what they were thinking, but I don't know if they thought that far. Um, I mean, but, um, but you know what? If they thought of this, maybe they did think of that. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Because if they thought well, of a 400 year old uh, medicine man being born out of someone's back. And who then wrote, ending up in space. Who wrote this movie? Well, this is the director was question. one of them. Uh, it was based on a novel. Oh boy! I want to know the what? difference. Oh boy! I think his name is Graham Masterson. I, I'm mm. not entirely sure. So Graham Something Masterson. Like so here's the thing about 1970s novels. The way people read these was <laughs> they were, they were on right. a rack at the airport, and you get on the airport and you read these things on a flight, and then you're done. <laughs> You know, and that oh, still goes on today. That's still a thing. <laughs> still today. Yeah, uh, it's called. Oh no, it's, well, it's called David Baldacci. David Baldacci. Yeah. Some or Michael Crichton books are that too. Michael yeah. Crichton. You can still yeah. like Daniel Steele. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a bunch of Dan airport, Brown. Airport Dan Brown is. <laughs> Dan Brown. He, he had one that kind of broke through everything else, but he's an airport novelist. I, Let's I'm, be real. I'm like ninety percent sure it's, there's a Thirty Rock joke where with the pirate latitudes, yeah. where Tracy Morgan says that's <laughs> the kind of book people read on planes. Yeah, and yeah. Like yeah. That. yeah, it's a thing. A, yeah. Yeah. It's a thing, and that's and that's where it's at. Would you be surprised if I told oh, no. you that there is a series of the Manitou books, Shut which up. include titles such as Shut Up, Oh Shit, The Manitou, Yes, The Revenge of the Manitou, Naturally, of course, Burial. Oh, oh, that's, that's burial? a good turn. How, yeah. do, so, how so, do you know? So the revenge and go on. Wait, huh? does it say burial, a Manitou novel? I don't know. <laughs> because that's what they would do now. <laughs> it just says burial. Because you got to know it's connected. Manitou blood. Okay. Okay. Uh, blind panic. Oh, wow. Well. And plague of the Manitou in 2015. So he's 2015? Been writing, yeah. yes. Wait, is that the full title? Plague of the Manitou. Okay. No, not in twenty. It was no, wrote, no, in was, no. That's what I was hoping. Plague of the Manitou in 2015 was I was what I was hoping like the whole fu- time. A was. movie where they go to the future. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, he's been writing these novels. Oh, oh my god. Is for he still decades. alive? Yes, he is because he's Jeez. interviewed on the Blu-ray, which wow. was put out recently by Shout Fact, as it probably should have. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. he started out his career like writing for Penthouse or something like that. Don't they all? Yeah. It's very it's, strange. And when you start your career that early, you're either writing for Penthouse or you're making porn. Yeah, that's so that's where yeah. you come from. That's where everyone started yeah. making mo- stuff. It's because it it's just like. easier to like. Well, it was the seventies. Yeah, Everybody that's what was, you do. You know, it was a swing. You're just show. trying to learn the mechanics of filmmaking, and who knows? Who cares what's happening in front of the camera? Yeah, you're just trying to figure it it's, out. It's yes, yeah, it's much like everyone in this movie. We're all just trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but Tony Curtis is just trying, trying to figure, to figure it, out. it out. But this is like this whole a acting professional. Mo- you know, like I guess that's what I was kind of surprised about. This, like this is a professional movie. It cost three million dollars in 1978. Ooh, it's expensive. That's expensive. Seventy. It looks, uh, professional. it looks professional. It looks professional. We got professional. a guy who's done other stuff. You got Those Burgess actors. Meredith and Tony Curtis and yeah. Susan Strasberg mm-hmm. and yeah. Stella Stevens. I think Playboy. She was in uh, Playboy, but she was also on a bunch of TV shows. With that name. She that was um, Playboy name. the medium. Oh, she was the medium? Allison, the medium. Still it's got music by the guy who did Amityville Horror and Dirty Harry, Lalo Schifrin. Okay. Schifrin? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's not like a cheap. Movie, no, no, which surprised me. It doesn't feel cheap. Yeah, and they put all this together, put it out because it was going to be as grisly as a. What did the that poster that I posted say on? Uh, I put it on Facebook. It was like in the grisly tradition of Alien, mm. <laughs> the Manitou. Even though we tried mm. to figure out how that was possible that that poster existed because the Manitou came out the year before Alien, but whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amen. It we're we're talking about time and space, you know, colliding here. <laughs> this movie ends in the void, and it raises all these questions. Yep. So, in the end of the movie, that's mm-hmm. right. In the void, somehow, uh, Karen now topless, or you know, gown that's just how falls you off that's how her. you gain your power. Apparently, you're going back to nature. This is a natural. Yes, space. she is the well. No, John tries to focus the power of the machines, Manitou. Right. By calling out, machine, Manitou of machines, hear me. Very simple. <laughs> Focus on me and kill the Manitou. If it was that simple this whole time, he's yeah, been sitting no, on that, huh? You are, there's no ancient words. Yeah. There's no nothing. Nope. It's just like, machine, Manitou. Yeah, listen, hear me. me. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Like, these machines can hear. The, the he's kind of a dick for letting those other people die when he could have just been doing this <laughs> yeah. the whole time. Maybe yeah. he's the real villain of this movie. He might be. His, his Tony Curtis should have just have running yeah. commentary be like, that's it? That's all you got to do? Mm-hmm. Isn't like, that what his part was? Basically, part in I the think last, What? We're doing what? And now we're doing this. And this right. is happening? 
okay, and we're taking. I want, they uh, reiterating. It should have been more for comedic value. I think he could have done more. You know I what though? I feel, <laughs> I feel like it's kind of watching someone like watching an IT guy try to fix your computer. He tries several things until something works. Oh yeah, that's kind of how I feel about this. Sure yeah, which, yeah. Like, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're yeah. going to try this. And okay, then we're going to try this. That is like, exactly the way I see that. Yeah, ends up being. Uh, oh, so you just unplugged it and plugged it back in? Yeah, that's that's yeah. all you did. <laughs> yeah, that was okay. it. That's Tony Curtis' solution. Great. That's right. Unplug right. it and plug it back in. He's but everyone, okay. but everyone, everyone, told him, everyone told him it's like, no, we got to bring in a professional. It's like, all right, <laughs> fine, whatever. Oh, so it's working now? Okay, oh, great, yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, all right. You blew in the cartridge and it's fine now. Okay, yeah, fine. yeah. But it turns out he can't actually unplug it and plug it back in because it's white man's magic somehow. Computers. So Tony Curtis has to stand up and he's yeah. able to focus the lightning, you know, to Karen. Sure. Yeah, and because he doesn't do much, he just kind of gets in and there it's and not, it it's goes not, to Karen. It's not because he has psychic powers; it's because love is the strongest. Of strongest the medicine. That's right. That's what this damn. That's straight. right. Yeah, the lesson in the movie. You're goddamn right. So she sits up in bed and zaps the thing, and this is the where the special effects budget pays off because she's shooting lasers out of her fingertips multiple times mm-hmm. with her hair all like. And this is a frank because there's, there's not lightning charging her. This is a uh, this is a scene. Fireballs are this throwing themselves everywhere. at the camera. This at is, her, this is back a lo- at. This back is a long at, scene. The void Tony explodes. <laughs> like it's going, it's all over the place. Oh yeah, we get 2001 yeah. at the a, end of this yeah, movie. It's a yeah, it's a battle. Through the fucking Stargate. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's crazy. It's amazing. It is crazy. But it's it is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really is. Well, thank God they take care of it because that va- that vanquishes yeah, both the Manitou up. and the great old one, the Destructor right. or whatever the hell his name was. Yeah, the, 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 the Destructor. Yeah, the Destructor. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you Choose. Call it's something. Yeah, Choose they, they the form my, of the Destructor. <laughs> it's basically just big cosmic eye. I keep calling it Manitou. It was like a it was, it was like a black hole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it was eyelid. like a black hole. Yeah. For someone who is like all powerful and can like tear apart the universe he really only kind of affected the lives of like six people yeah yeah he was growing in <laughs> yeah, the scope of the movie right. was they, actually they kind of small off. considering they went to space they yeah cut him off before he can you know grow all powerful yeah, you're still he went to contained he turned the office into space how much more powerful yeah. do you get i mean you could turn the whole world into space yeah we don't know that he didn't in that moment <laughs> is, and is then he's, they, yeah, they yeah. we don't know that he didn't so yeah yeah came back to reality well, they never really went through the door either into space, so they were never. It cost too much money, Colin. We already spent yeah, three million dollars. Someone we float through space, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, on the green yeah. screen. But her bed was still floating. Yeah, I don't get it. Well, she was uh, still possessed by the manatee. She's still a connection. This, is, oh, this, is, okay. this was uh, sure. Tony Curtis's motivation because you were like, you know, asking at what point would you leave? But the yeah. whole thing is basically. In his point of view, he's got to save Karen. So he's staying until yeah. Karen lives or dies. I, le- I legitimately thought she was dead. She's such like a non-character in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Like I she thought is, she was dead. They refer to her an awful lot and they're very concerned about her. But right. like as a character in the movie, like she is absent. She's pretty tertiary. Yeah. She's- yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. But anyway, that's it, right? I mean, they blow him up, and yeah. then uh, can we? Can they we? Um, pay the t- he gives a yeah, he gives him his cigarettes, and he's on his way. Here's back a pack to of South cigarettes. Dakota. They literally go back like nothing happened at the yeah. end of this movie. Yeah. Wow, it is yeah wild. I mean, they just... have to. How else? Are, how do you end up with that but, ending scene? But, There's multiple dead people in a hospital. They didn't call the cops. There's no yeah. witnesses. Like, to no, this I shit. get it. How else do you end it? Like, what else? Do you <laughs> it do? is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just talking more about it. in the pace of the movie, though. It is a whiplash a for the audience. It is. Like how quickly it goes back. Even the music, it sounds like a straight up like sitcom ending. I was expecting that shit to freeze frame on the cab there. We, we don't even see like. You get the curb from the curb your enthusiasm yeah, music. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even see Karen after she demolishes Well, we, know. Well, we, we don't see, see her during the movie anyway. Yeah, she's she, like, so hardly zaps in the movie. it and then we're just like, we don't see her afterwards. No. Yeah, because. I know. I mean, what, that they was do, her no, moment. They do because, hug her. Because her, just like, it's all over, and he goes down. And he's oh, like, yeah, yeah. "Oh yeah, I can't." I think she speaks for right, like yeah. the first yeah. time. You know, there it's is like, that. Yeah, it's her, her, the the sequel is her dealing with her fucking PTSD in Revenge of the Men. <laughs> Why that movie was never made. Um, but let's let's oh, let's remind good. everyone though <laughs> that the real thing this ended on is a fact. A uh, fact. Uh, <laughs> a fact. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What was that fact? This that is on the screen. Back the in end. 1969, a yeah. boy in Japan had a 
a tumor like this growing on him that they did eventually find that it contained a fetus. A fact. A fact. Mm-hmm. That means it's true. Undeniable. Gotta be true. Yeah. I mean, Gotta be true. If you say fact, so. that makes it true, right? Yeah. Obviously. You don't have to cite, cite it's anything. On screen, it's fact. <laughs> fact. Yeah. It was very Dwight Trude. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to look this one up. Um, <laughs> can we... Uh, I am skeptical. I'm not going to put that much effort uh, into no. I believe them. Should, um, Just going with it. Should we end on the uh, tagline on this? Probably. What is it? Evil does not die. It waits to be reborn. Dun, dun, dun. I actually kind of like good. that. good. Yeah, I, I like, like it. that. Mm-hmm. It works mm-hmm. for this movie. Yeah. The, the Manitou. The Manitou. All right, that's it. All right, I guess that's the Manitou. Uh, tell you what. So what we have been hedging our bets on, listener, is what we actually thought of the Manitou and whether we would recommend it to you. There's four people here. We're going to find out. I'm kind of curious. But first, before we get there, so stick with us, right? Before we get there, we're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need to. And our mailman's name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thanks, Igor. He always looks kind of like a Manitou a little bit. Yeah, well, he's I definitely, mean, he's like four well, Manitou stacked on top of him. I was like, well, he does himself, have but... a hump. Like, yeah. we can't deny it. Do you yeah. think there's anything in that? Oh, there's though? absolutely something. In there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I always thought he was just like pus filled, you know? Uh, I think but now he, we know. I think he eats it, though. <laughs> That's what put everybody over the line. All right, fine. That's great. No, I'm pretty sure he just grabs that shit off and eats it. Well, we should let. We don't feed him. What else is he gonna eat? (laughs) Oh, yeah, he's got a little straw that hooks to his back. (laughs) Oh, God! Slurping the pus right out of there. All right. Um, Done. We should probably. No one's eating while they're listening (laughs) to this. I hope you are. We should uh, tell people how they can get a hold of us uh, and join in and, you know, Igor's mailbag uh, by writing it on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or possibly on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, Muller Moral writes in. Oh, Welcome. That's a new name. And says, uh, could you all review Roger Corman's Galaxy of Terror and Forbidden World, a.k.a. Mutant 1982? It's also the 40th anniversary of Alien, so this year, 2019, is the year to talk about Alien ripoffs. I would appreciate it. Thanks. Those That's, are great suggestions. Yeah. We did an Alien ripoff. It was called Shocking. Oh, Dark. God. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't fucking count. Yeah. Yeah. Just go back and listen to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I took I took a suggestion uh, to heart, actually. Colin's like, been That's doing a good it. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen Alien a hundred fucking times. Let's watch the Alien ripoff. So sure. I have been watching. A lot of alien ripoffs. Mm. Uh, about the Manitou, Andrew John writes in and says, this movie is pure insanity. Mm. Maya Madsen writes in and says, I'm not entirely sure how this movie even got made. It's more coherent than Zardoz, at least. I read the book <laughs> twice and its sequels. Graham Masterson is off the chain. <laughs> it is more coherent than Zardoz. And I mean... That given the premise of the movie, that's saying a lot. It's like, more coherent than a lot of movies we've yeah. watched down here. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah, that is a good point. Yeah. Even having like one of the most out there premise. Yeah. Okay, uh, shaky subject matter. Writes in and says, "I read the series. I saw the Manitou after Eight is Enough one night on ABC. I was <laughs> blown away." He says, Eight "Of course, I was enough. like 10. How is this on <laughs> this ABC? Is on TV? It's a oh, yeah. thing oh showed up in the Sunday night movie or whatever." Um, oh. Robin Lineman Silverberg writes in and says, I remember the book was great when I read it at 12 or 13. The movie, not so much. Man, everybody's read, everyone's pr- read this I was book. Say, I'm really this proud of how amazing. many of you have read this book. Yeah, wow. It's great. Ooh, the Manitou. Uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen writes in and says, I'm going to have to watch this madness. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can see that. Uh, Cobra can. Kumite art. <laughs> That's a lot of everything in that name. <laughs> he writes in and says, Awesome movie. And uh, Norman Myers writes in and says, my bu- my buddy Josh Waisley Inc. Waisley? Waisley Link. Waisley Link. There we go. Josh Waisley Link did this character as a mask for his company, Nightmare Force. What? Up. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. It looks pretty cool. It, goes, it retails for 165 bucks. Oh, my God. Look it up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nightmare Force uh, website. He has masks and the mana, too. Yeah. Um, about uh, last week's movie, which was Man's Best Friend, Josh Zemer writes in and says, I remember the teaser trailer for this movie played the How Much Is That Doggy in the Window song before you hear a blood-curdling scream. 
But years later, I remember watching this on the USA channel. The movie itself is very much a movie that feels like the 80s, but with 90s fashion Mm -hmm. and 90s crappy hair. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, no pickles pictures with the movie for this one. He wanted to sit this out because of the cruelty of it. Oh, (laughs) I mean, I guess it is kind of a horror movie for dogs. So he says, this is him taking a stand against the movie. Hi, Pickles. I'm sorry, Aww. Pickles. I didn't mean to offend. <laughs> oh, Pickles. Oh my God. The foot over the face picture. That's oh. really. Oh, baby. Um, uh, we have weakness for animals if you had not uh, figured that out. Uh, shaky subject matter says, ah, I remember this one because when the dog was left at the junkyard and the guy started to torture him, my dad got pissed and yelled, Turn the shit off now. Oh, my yeah. God. That's a classic. What are you watching moment? Which parents, man, they have a knack for walking in at the exact wrong they, moment. Oh, yeah. boy, they, do they. Is that their... Sean, do you have that superpower? <laughs> Can you um, do that? <laughs> I, I think I'm uh, I'm, 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 I'm cutting it off at the pass. Like, I don't <laughs> let him get to the point. Either that or I'm just allowing him to watch... Within Probably. reason, the well, stuff. We'll, we'll check back in when he's a little older. Right. And I think it's more, when he can actually. Yeah. Right. I think it's when he's able to like choose this shit on his yeah, own. Yeah, that's what I'm and, I'm, and I'm not. Yeah, I think <laughs> we got a few more years before we get to that point. You got to let us know when you start. But I probably that. will be walking and things going. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Are you watching? Well, the upside is hopefully you'll no. have already seen no. it all before. When, I, you know what? I, maybe <laughs> you're like, no, oh, no, 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 hey, no, no. It's gonna be more like, hey, I remember this. You shouldn't be watching it. My dad walked in the room when. I was watching Sex in the City and it was a very like mm-hmm. vulgar moment and he's Sex. like is this the shit you watch I'm like dad I'm 23 <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing you could be watching the most benign thing that has one scene yeah, that is it's questionable true. Find it's it. true and they will find they, will they find know it. I swear Parents. they know that is a parental superpower yeah, yeah. yeah. it's know. true uh, well, about the previous week's movie, which was Lake Placid, mm. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, okay, so not, not exactly what you asked for, but the Discworld series of novels had a crocodile god called Offler. Oh, really? Interesting. Huh. What was the question? We, we, we were asking about what religions have alligators, because remember, they yeah, said, yeah. like, yeah. alligators are the most worshipped animal in the world. And we're like, nah. and we're like bullshit. Yeah. They're not, <laughs> actually. Flat, so, yeah. so, But there is a series of books where they are deities. Is I what like I'm the, getting oh, from that. I like gotcha. to know that, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. That's, no, that's, uh, some, that's something. Yeah, yes. that that's more effort than that movie put into it. So <laughs> It's <laughs> true. It's true. Uh, Sean Stiff writes in and says, I love Bridget Fonda in Point of No Return. Okay. Don't. Remember that? I don't. Yeah, I remember I that remember one. Of, that movie. Uh, it was a remake of La Femme Nikita. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, she was an assassin. Mm-hmm. I thought her last movie was after we did the episode. I'm like, was it Kiss of the Dragon? The no Jet idea. Movie? Um, no idea. G Money writes in, and he says, because I grew up G-Money. in the VHS era, I always remember Bill Pullman from Serpent in the Rainbow and Brain Dead <laughs> because of the colors. Yeah. yeah. Hey, G Money. Haven't heard from you. Anymore. I know. I know. G Money. Welcome back. Welcome to back, the G Money. Scene. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, You're full of description of the situation, sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should just put, start putting sarcastic at the end Sarc- of everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's all in joke. Yeah. yeah, you got to listen to that oh, one. That's to know funny. That that's funny. That's uh, funny. Brent Zemecki writes in and says, I love Lake Placid and I'm not ashamed to say it. Add a boy. That's fine. Good for you. Yeah. Like what you like. You shouldn't be ashamed of it. No. no. way worse movies no. you could like. Don't be ashamed like what you of that. Like. Uh, Everyone's got a kink. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of, JWAC <laughs> writes in and says, watch the first five minutes of Lake Placid 3, the uncut version featuring Roxanne Pallet, one of the most hated celebrities in Britain at the moment. Definitely, definitely not clean for the sci-fi channel. Wow. We may have to take your word on that. I mean, I'm like interested. Three. Yeah, why sh- three. Yeah. I wish you would have told us why we need to watch the first few minutes. That, well, well, I'm assuming they want it's to got watch Roxanne Pallet in it. She's I on mean, like a celebrity Big Brother kind of thing. She was on a soap opera, but apparently it was controversy right now because she said her co-star punched her, and then they played the video, and it's like, did they actually... And yeah, so... Oh, she, interesting. Yeah. Did you dig into this? I was like, did you look at look I into might this? end up watching okay. in the beginning of... Lake Placid Lake 3, Placid three yeah. but not Lake Placid versus Anaconda. No. The lake fighting a snake. Not the right. monster. Lake not the monster. Snake. Just yeah. the lake itself. Ding, 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 ding. There it is. 
Well, Basin Voorhees writes in and says, at half speed, y'all sound a little boo. Entertaining, if I must say. Only at half speed. He says, I'm at the introduction of the cast. Well, I slowed down. Okay, so. I, I'm pretty sure I've asked what we sound like on half speed before. <laughs> All right, we need a little backstory. Ryan. This is a previous uh, episode. Somebody wrote in and said that right. they listened to all their podcasts on ha- one and a half one speed. One and a half. One yeah. and a half speed. Except for us. They listen which, to us at normal speed. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that got screwed up in the translation or something because I said we you have to consume us at the speed of life. L I F E. Yeah, that's your fault. Karate Warrior Two <laughs> tried listening to us at half speed, and he said, and I had to explain. <laughs> he's like, oh, now I get it. I thought you guys said, guys said speed of light. <laughs> this is all messed up. Just listen to us regular. <laughs> it's not important Just anymore. Just listen yeah. to us regular. We're better yeah. at regular. It's possible that regular we told speed. a bunch of people that you yeah, could that actually might be. Let's listen clear it up. to your podcast. At, Let's at, just clear at it up now. Just listen to speed. us regular and you'll, regular, you'll yeah. get it. Oh. It'll be fine. Uh, and then back uh, the the Rage Carry 2 episode. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, feline Fatale. Okay. It could be Fatale. Yeah. Because there's an E on the end. Fatale. 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 Feline Fatal. Poison Ivy with Drew Barrymore is a cult classic, one of my favorite guilty pleasures. The mm-hmm. sequels did not even compare. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's because uh, yeah. the we director also right. of... Uh, right. Yeah, yeah we character. talked about the uh, that series. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. So there you have it. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you all for writing in. Thank you for writing in. in. Thank you very that much. was a very full mailbag. That was a full mailbag. Yeah, I like well, when it's in more That's what makes doing this worth We doing. love it. This is my favorite. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. So now we're going to go around the room and give you our final wrap ups. We're going to let you know what we thought about tonight's movie. The Michaela! <laughs> I was expecting you to yell that loud. <laughs> it's been a while since I've gone like that oh, volume yeah, yeah, for it. Figured uh, I'd, I'd even, really go for yeah, it this time. Had, we haven't had rage shots. <laughs> uh, Michaela, what did you think about tonight's movie, The, the Manitou? Manitou. Uh, it makes no sense. It has a lot of plot holes. How so? Uh, there's a lot of plot yes, holes. Please describe. But who cares? <laughs> you're not here because you're expecting a iron tight plot right you know i mean the premise alone you're kind of like well i've never heard of that before so if you've never heard of it before you kind of had no baseline for what's right and what's wrong so i think i mean are you ever gonna get an opportunity to see another movie like this i think you have to watch it just based (laughs) on like the sheer novelty and absurdity of it but but even based on just like the log line alone, it's more watchable than you think it is. I know it doesn't yeah. sound, it sounds weird, but not necessarily watchable. Mm. It's a pretty watchable movie. I think Tony Curtis really helps make it digestible really and does. watchable. Yep. Um, and it's expensive. It looks good. It doesn't look cheap at all. It doesn't feel like a B movie. It feels like a really expensive movie. Like it kind of feels like it's not as like, like we talked about magic. That was like an Oscar worthy movie, right? Like this yeah. obviously is not on that level, but it's not far below that. I would say in like it's quality and it's production. Yeah. Um, and I, I you gotta watch it. Like, I mean, <laughs> there's so many weird things that I'm sure it, it sounds like we're exaggerating them, but I don't know if we're even doing them justice enough for how weird they are. It's you just got to see it. It's we can't do it justice. You have to see it. So yes, check out the Manitou. Definitely. Sean. Uh, I would agree. I don't think we have done this movie justice in describing it tonight. I feel like we came up short in 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 expressing what this movie is. Um, it's it's pretty fucking crazy. Like it's it's nuts. That I mean, just again, think about what it is. A four hundred year old medicine man is being reborn out of the neck of Susan Strasberg. It's nuts. And again, it is immensely watchable because in a movie where Tony Curtis. I don't know why he's in this movie. Right. But he is in this movie. Sure and I think is. that makes the moments where we don't have a Manitou, it makes them very watchable because he's a very good, he's a good actor. Yes. And I like watching him just like hang around and do shit and con old ladies and try and figure <laughs> out what the hell's going on. With the wizard cloak, too. Yeah. I forgot about that. That wizard wearing, cloak was he awesome. He's wearing mustache, a wizard everything. cloak and a fake mustache. <laughs> like, he makes oh. what would be the uh, maybe dull moments in other movies. He makes he makes them lively. And it's a character who I'm just like, yeah, I'm with you. Like, uh, I'm mm-hmm. with him going on this journey to figure out what the fuck's going on. That mm-hmm. and Burgess Meredith comes out of nowhere. Oh, beautifully, uh, too. In, in a beautiful scene. Beautifully. <laughs> which is uh, just only adds to what's going yeah. on here. And then we get to an actual birth of a Manitou and all that. That encompasses. Um, 
Wow. Uh, I'm, I was surprised by this movie. Uh, I really enjoyed it tonight. It was fun. Uh, I recommend the Manitou. Uh, <laughs> this is a good movie. Yeah. I was very surprised. Um, so, yeah, you should definitely watch this. Again, it's kind of nuts. So give it a watch because you won't see m- most things like this in your uh, uh, in things that you view. So uh, mm-hmm. I definitely recommend mm-hmm. the Manitou. Holly. Yeah. Um. You know, Michaela was saying that there's there's some things wrong with this movie, but here's the thing: you have to get on board with this movie from the get go. Just get on board and go with exactly where it's going, because you won't believe where the fuck it's going. It's insanity. You just have to get on get on for the ride and just go with it. It's bad shit crazy, and I totally agree. Tony Curtis just sells this movie. He's amazing. He can do no wrong, in my opinion. I love Tony Curtis. And Burgess Meredith is just fucking brilliant. I'm t- I'm telling you, you are gonna believe that he is exactly who he's playing. It's wonderful. I I had so much fun with this movie. It does it does have a 70s pace, and it's gonna slow down a little bit in certain parts. But god damn it, it's so absolutely bonkers that it it makes up for it. It doesn't even matter. It's it's insanity. I like we seriously we can't we can't do it justice. We can't properly describe how bananas it is, but it is bananas, and it's bananas that you should watch because you have to see it to believe it. It's so much fun. There's not a movie like this out there. There is nothing like The Manitou, so you have to watch it. You have to check it out. Colin. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, there's... The reason I think, you know, like, you don't really come in contact with movies with, with movies like this all that often is because they're willing to go with a um, like a leap of imagination that movies today don't seem to have. And I'm not recommending that necessarily that we do. Right. Well, maybe I am because at least that would give us a, you know, there'd be different things going on out there, but this no is movie a- yeah. that we watch in theaters. Now is going to end up in space. No, because it's going to end up in the void of space. Well, I mean, with- I mean, what do you? I'm, we've seen like, a lot of movies in space. Like, well, no, like, no, no, no. I mean, but end up I was in like a, literally like the last five Avenger movies. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. And not a movie where, like not, not, not like space Curse of La Llorona. Like Pet Cemetery was not going to end up in space. <laughs> right. La Llorona was not going to end up in space. <laughs> right. yeah. Pet, Pet Cemetery might have been better. This is one of the, right, exactly. This is one of those movies. <laughs> no, it's goes true. With that where you're like, you're oh, like, we're in space what? now. Yeah. Have the balls to go to space. Those movies are not going to end up in space. But this is like a thing. Maybe only novelists do this because I heard a podcast where Stephen King was, uh, I can't remember if he was talking to Eli Roth or Mick Harris, but he was talking about like, you know, he had this idea for a book, maybe he's working on it right now, that he had a vision in his head of like a school um, like picking up and walking all over a town and like you know plowing down cars and doing this and I'm and sure I'm like, he did. And, but I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when you hear that you're like, that sounds like that sounds crazy. That sounds insane. And this is what novelists do. And that's why I'm saying this is coming from a novelist or, you know, they have this imagination for these concepts where you're like, listen, Graham, I don't know if anybody's <laughs> going to buy this. This woman has a 400 year old, you know, native American medicine man growing on her neck. Like that sounds crazy. Like, you know, it requires a little bit of buy-in a sure. lot, maybe <laughs> a lot of right? bit, a yeah. lot of bit of buy-in. Yep. <laughs> and so then the writer is tasked with the trying to set up like, you know, all of these, uh, to try and couch it in the real world. So you can at least, uh, you know, subscribe to it, but they're giving you like a flight of fancy, which I think is a bigger, broader kind of, uh, imaginative canvas than, a lot of movies that we see now, it's like, that's kind yeah. of gone, you know, because you want to make it relatable and you want to make it mundane. And then like the supernatural comes in. These movies are like, no, no, we're going with the craziest fucking supernatural concept. And like, what would that be like? Mm-hmm. And I think probably, you know, I mean, nobody knows of this fucking, I assume, even though even everybody wrote in and has apparently read the book. Right. So, apparently uh, maybe it is a bigger deal than no. I thought, but I'm like, I mean, I've heard about it all my life, but I've never actually sat down to watch it until a couple weeks ago. And when I did, I was like, I am fucking bringing this movie to the freak show (laughs) because every once in a while you find a movie like your, you know, or Star Crash or something that you're like, I cannot believe what I'm watching. Like I was live tweeting, watching it, and there was a lot of exclamation. Like, can you believe that this is happening in this movie right now? You know, I'm not going to say that it's a it's good. 
as a legit film. Holly was saying basically you got to buy into this at the beginning. Yes. And that is a requirement. I actually gave everybody here a little bit of that at the beginning. I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what we're going to, how your reaction is going to be because I was a little bit, you know, tipsy when I started this and either go with it or I think you could probably uh, hit the brakes pretty early and go like, no, mm. I can't. Uh, <laughs> I might make the argument for it just being a good movie. No. Well, I think it's a good movie, uh, but, well, but, yeah. but for, for our people specifically yes. <laughs> yes. for people like us, uh, if you yeah. haven't seen the Manitou, you have to seek it out because this is, uh, I think like the, uh, the essence of like a freak show movie. <laughs> I mean, it you is. Know, yeah. but part of what I like about it, I think in, in some ways is, yeah, I like the San Francisco travel log mm. and I like the <laughs> movement of it, you know, uh, instead of the whole movie taking place in a house. Yeah you know, or two locations like it gets out, gets around and somehow that, you know, where, you know, it's going to be this kind of movie. It's a medical procedural. Then, uh, there's a seance. Then we got to go talk to Burgess Meredith. Then we're going off to find the, uh, the, which is its own genre of movie. Yeah. (laughs) Going to talk to Burgess Meredith. It just kind of feels like, even though it's a kind of a, it has a languid pace, seventies pace. Sure. It it still feels like it's moving and doing new things all the time until it's like, and then there's, you know, then he, there's frozen, there's a fucking little dude coming out of the back of a woman, you know, I mean, you just, and then we ended space. Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you have to check this movie out. I mean, like uh, we've all been saying, basically, I think Distilled is like, uh, this is its own genre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, it's the greatest movie ever made about a 400 year old medicine man really uh, being birthed. Uh, on a woman's neck. Really? Yeah. Uh, you've never absolutely. seen anything like it, and you probably never will again. The Manitou, till they make the sequel. Revenge never have. Manitou. Never have. That's four for the Manitou. Yeah, that's a uh, freak show approved. Next mm-hmm. week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by. Sean, what are we watching next week? Oh, I think I can fit in one more spring. I've seen, this, despite that you've declared it uh, it's uh, summer. summertime. I have. It yeah. is. Um, the box office May. has also yeah. declared it summer mm, as well. I'm, I'm going weather wise. I think we can fit in one more spring of sequels. All right. In this thing. All right. So um, next week, we're going to watch Tremors 2. Uh, of course we are. Mm. All right. <laughs> oh, wow. Rounding. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's excited for this one. We've done Tremors. And now we're going to see Tremors 2. Okay, fine. Okay. And that's <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you're, you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. Go to pick Critters 3. Fuck all you.